Hey yo, what's good everybody? It's the Ice Maniac back again with another video Photoshop tutorial for everybody. I know I've been away for a little while, but hopefully getting back in the swing of things is going to have these coming back to you on the regular. Uh, today's topic, as you can see, is going to be a gold mixtape cover art text effect with a custom diamond pattern that I myself came up with. Um, everybody pretty much for the most part be using that Tansta pattern that, that he came up with like a while ago and big ups to do because everybody be using it but I'm just getting sick and tired of seeing it so I, I decided to go out and uh, and get my own so uh, basically let's uh, let's just get started so this isn't a real lengthy tutorial um, I got the idea for this tutorial based off of this text effect right here. I can't recall exactly which um, mixtape site I saw this one on, but um, for the most part, outside of just like very basic gradients and um, just generally being creative with your text, there's not too too many um, ridiculous text effects out there in the mixtape game right now, so uh, to come across one that was, I mean, this one isn't like amazing by any means, but uh, it's kind of cool, so I'd be asking me for more text effects, so I figured this would just be a good place to uh, start as a jumping off point. Um, I don't know who actually designed this, I'm not really feeling the cover as a whole, like dude could have definitely like put a displacement map on the t-shirt and, and uh, you know, made it like wrinkle a little bit more instead of just doing doing some text effect, text warp on that, but, I mean, it's, it's alright, nothing, nothing too spectacular, but without further ado, let's get it cracking. Um, I decided, this is basically my version of it right here, um, as you can see, I, I just wanted to switch it up and make it gold, and, um, the diamond pattern, the fill in the middle, is what I was talking about earlier, so, let's get started. We're going to start with a new canvas, new, and we're going to make it 700 by 700 pixels. From that point, we're just going to go get our text tool, drag, open a text box. Now, I'm going to be using the actual font that uh, dude used in his picture, which is LHF uh, Boston Truck Style. Um, unfortunately, I cannot distribute that font out to you because it is a commercial font and I'm not trying to get sued for copyright infringement. So, you can use a, a similar font or if you got it from, from however you got it from, you can use that. So, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to write out my text. The first line of text, I got my caps lock on, is going to be Doe. And then after that, I'm just going to go ahead and click off that, and I'm going to make another layer of text, which is going to be my boy city underneath it. Myself, personally, I always like to uh, split up my text just because it gives you a little bit more versatility as far as the effects that you can do, and um, especially in the positioning. And then again, on the lower one, I'm just going to uh, make a little bit smaller so we're going to be fitting on the canvas. And just reposition that in the center. I'm going to zoom in. Just resize my window a little bit because I still think everybody can see that. Okay, that should be good. Um, and I'm just going to nudge that over because I'm a little particular. Alright, now from here, what we're going to do is we're going to have our boy city selected. Now we're also we're going to go ahead and we're going to select control on our keyboard. And we're going to click Doe, which is going to give us uh, a multiple selection right here. Now from there, with both layers selected, we're going to press Control again on our keyboard and with the letter G, which is the shortcut for create a group. So now basically we just have this text group grouped together. Now, um, as you can see, this is these are not rasterized, these are still vector text layers, so um, that's why we, we did that. So these can still be edited later on. Now from here, with our group selected, we're going to right click that, duplicate group. That's just going to give us a duplicate of this group. On the duplicate of the group, the group one copy, we're going to right click again. Okay, and then we're going to go to merge group, which is basically just a quick way to rasterize our text. 
So now that we have our text rasterized, we're going to be adding some, well, quite a few layer styles to it. So from here, we're going to right click and go to blending options. Now, when I'm working on text, I like to start with the color first, just because I can see the effect more easily take shape that way, and I can just visualize it better. So that's where I'm going to start here by applying a gradient overlay. So we're going to click, click our gradient overlay box, and I'm going to get a nice gold gradient. I have these, I got these off of DeviantArt, um, I will supply a link in the information for you guys so you guys can go and grab them, but they're, uh, they're very good gradients, at least that gold ones, and gold ones are hard to come by. So I'm going to select that. Now also, um, if you're not aware, if you have your arrow selection tool out, you can come over here while, while you still have your layer dialog box open and you can drag up and down and you can create a different effect as far as the scaling is concerned with your gradient. So I'm just going to change some settings over here. Normal is fine. Now uh, opacity is 100%. We're going to keep it a linear gradient and we're just going to switch up the scaling a little bit as well as the angle that we're going to be looking at this. So I'm going to just change this down. to 51 looks about good and then again I'm going to drag just to get a, a, the gradient scaling the way that I want it. Alright, that looks good. Now then from there we're going to go ahead and we're going to start beveling and embossing this. So cl click bevel and emboss and inner bevel is fine, smooth is fine. We're going to change the depth to 225 size is fine and then we're just going to soften it up one pixel um, from there what we are going to do is we're going to come down here into the shading portion of our dialog box and we're just going to make a few uh, few changes um, specifically in the multiply uh, shadow mode dialog area we're going to change the color from black in our color dialog to 9d9 seven three e which is just sort of like this olive sepia sort of tone and that's good right there we're gonna change the percentage to fifty eight and that's working out just fine the screen is going to go up to eighty five then from here we're just gonna contour this and we're gonna give it some rounded step contour which that selection right there so you can start to see that we're going to have an, an area to sort of fill in like we have embossed edges 